Singapore's like they've got five songs. We go back to the UK and we're like, I like it a lot. We've got Google Pay coming. You'll blink 12. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Just feel like work becomes your life. First. Three men that ganged up on you. $15. Yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Look who's with me today. I'm back. Making a guest appearance. It's Justin. Yeah. Today then we're going to be talking about Things that we wish someone had told us before we moved to Singapore. I filmed a video similar to this before, but I thought we could do like a part two. Okay. And share some things that we kind of wish we had known before we moved to Singapore. Also, if you guys are interested in hearing about my perspective and learnings uh, whilst being in Singapore, as well as my recommendations all across the city, I actually wrote an ebook called The S Word, which is basically a guide to Singapore from an inside outsider. So if you wanna go check that out, please do. I will link it in the description below. And let's go ahead and get started. Let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. I really, I'm actually gasping for a cup of tea. Got one here. And I just realized you made me one. That's gonna be mighty hot. It's not too bad actually. Ooh, nah. It is hot in here though because every time we film we have to turn the aircon off. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting a little bit sweaty. Okay, let's talk about the first thing which is I wish we had known that groceries would be around like 35% more expensive than they are in the UK. I know some people are going to comment and say yeah but you can go to the wet markets, yeah you can go here, yeah you can go there. But if you're doing something for convenience and you have to get it quickly yeah you don't sometimes you don't have time to organize your days yeah I think that's the issue is that you can't necessarily get everything you want in one large yeah. supermarket because um, they're all quite small right yeah so the cheaper options are usually somewhere else like the wet markets and even then it's more like the inflation of things of like fruit and vegetables strawberries that cost $15 yeah. and also just I think a lot of um, our favourite like international foods. Yeah, are so all... the comfort foods you we would typically buy from home are not the general go-to foods that the locals would normally buy in Singapore, right? Yes, yeah, so they're kind of seen as like... Oh, special items. Yeah, special items. So yeah, that, I think that's something we didn't know is that every time we go to the supermarket we probably gasp at the price of groceries. Yeah. So one thing we didn't realise was just how so everyone says it's one of the biggest selling points for Singapore is just the safety. Yeah. How safe it is. You can walk down the street at night with, without thinking twice. You're not going to bump into, I'm not saying you're not going to bump into them, but things like drunken fights are rare. We, we experienced one in the UK, didn't we? They happen every day. No, but like we got into one. Oh, we've been in a and few, And it was yeah. honestly the most traumatizing, like one of the most traumatizing yeah. experiences. Like there was three men that ganged up on you at the same time yeah and it was the scariest thing yeah. nothing like that happens well i mean i'm not to say it doesn't happen we haven't experienced anything like that in singapore um yeah, yeah. no drunken recklessness there's not you know people aren't falling yeah. out of the clubs here it's, and... it's not like it's not that it doesn't happen yeah. i'm sure it does yeah. but it's not so common no it's not, not every day no <laughs> yeah something that's definitely going to be a shock when we go back home. Yeah. Another funny example is that in our old condo, um, our neighbour literally left their brand new Gucci trainers on their doorstep. Yeah. And we looked at them and we were like, they'd be gone. They've left their Gucci trainers just outside their house. Right. If that was the UK, they would have been swiped in no time. Seconds. Um, so it's just things like that, like you can leave your bike unlocked, yeah. it's probably not going to be stolen, you can leave, leave your, your, phone, on your a table, phone on a table, at a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's an amazing thing about Singapore. Yeah. Something we didn't realise is that local television and radio just wasn't really going to be not for me. a thing. I think like the tele TV scene in Singapore doesn't have the best reputation. Um, everyone says that it's not very good. But if you want to watch local TV, there's not much to yeah. watch. But I think maybe that's a culture thing. Maybe it's just Definitely. because of what we're used to growing up on. Yes, and I think that the whole creative scene is definitely changing in Singapore. It's mm. certainly changed in the past five years when we've been here. It's getting better. So hopefully, yeah, it will just evolve. Yeah. Um, same for radio. What I find strange about radio here is that they always play like old songs. Yeah. There's never any new songs on the radio. Singapore's like they've got five songs. Yeah, for like five songs on repeat. On repeat. Yeah. Um, not sure why that is. If you do know the answer, please yeah, comment below. But um, I would rather, so I, I've given up with the English radio, so I just normally try something else. Don't understand what they're saying. Yeah, you like the... Um, There's a Malay one. Malay radio. I don't know what they're saying, but it's better than the English one. <laughs> Something 
else we wish we had known before we moved here was uh, the different neighbourhoods and areas uh, that you can live in and uh, which ones are best for expats. Something that we came here blind to really. Yeah, we had no idea where to live. If you are coming to Singapore blind, one thing we used was Property Guru. Yes. Um, and we wish we'd found it sooner. Yeah. Because it's very difficult to know one, where to live in Singapore because there's many different neighbourhoods. Two, you need to understand you need to live near MRT stations or bus links. Hawker centres. Hawker centres are a must. So there's this local knowledge that we just never had. Yeah. So yeah, we ended up using Property Guru every time we looked for a new apartment. Yeah. We really liked it because it actually showed you the different kinds of neighbourhoods that you can live in and what's good about those areas, why you might want to live there. Mm. It also allows you to filter what kind of property you're looking for, whether it's HDB, landed house, condo. We never knew about these different kinds of price range. Kinds of accommodations. Yeah, price range, oh, yeah. of course. It also lets you know if you're in close proximity to an MRT, which we yeah. realised was like essential. It's essential, yeah. Or at least a bus stop. At least a bus stop, it's essential. But you generally are yeah. in Singapore. So yeah, Property Guru was a great help. I will be sure to link it below if you want to use it yourself, if you're looking for a new place to live. But without that, I don't know how we would have found all our new places. <laughs> how many times have we moved now? I was trying to think. Three. Three times. No, four. Four. Four times. I really like that because We've got to experience different neighbourhoods yeah. and different um, areas of Singapore and I really do recommend that. Like, If you just get stuck in one, I guess it can get a bit, a bit stagnant, but living in different areas kind of spices yeah. up your experiences here. Something else I realised <laughs> when we moved here is that it's almost impossible to get a table at a restaurant or a bar on a weekend without a reservation. Yeah, I think it might be because Singaporeans are super organised. Yeah, maybe. Whereas, I was thinking that. Say in the UK, you might just, you think, you don't know what you're going to have for dinner or We're lunch. like very last minute. So minutes. you just stumble in, you walk past somewhere, stumble in. We'd never plan it. I think it's also because we came from like towns. We yeah. didn't, we weren't city people. Smaller so population. Yeah, so if we wanted to go to like a restaurant, we didn't have to book, you'd just walk in. Yeah. Whereas I feel like cities are overpopulated. Everyone's like organized, we're the least organized people. Yeah. And they've already booked their reservations. So when you walk into a restaurant on a weekend, they'll say, have you got a reservation? And if you go, no, likelihood and is... And then they start going... <laughs> yeah. Uh, you might be waiting around for yeah. quite a while. Even if you want to go to like a cafe on a weekend, it's usually so busy. Like yeah. there's queues out of the door. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know if that's... Maybe it's because it's... Um, I don't know, maybe it's just a more common hobby to just go for lunch. I was going to say that. Maybe it wasn't so popular five, ten years ago. On the subject of that, I wanted to talk about local rate versus foreigners rate. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, It's something that like we had never known when we moved here, but um, we've had a few experiences where, <laughs> as foreigners, we've been charged more than locals would be for certain things. I know you've experienced it I've in hawker yeah. centres. Yeah. I, when we first moved here, I, I could see the board, um, and I could see the price, and then I went to pay and the price was different and I thought nothing of it, I thought maybe the board is old, maybe the prices have all changed yeah. and then someone bought some, the same thing and their price was different <laughs> to mine. I was like, <laughs> excuse, me. excuse me, but I didn't say anything, like typical Brit, I just yeah. kept quiet but I was, yeah, I noticed it. I yeah, like, oh. and there's been certain things where maybe I've gone to, I think I went to get some clothes adjusted and I know that they charged me like a lot more than they would have charged a local or I've been to places with Singaporean friends and they'll be like, no, 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 they've given you the foreigner rate, like I'll, I'll get it for you, they'll give me the local rate. So it's like, it does exist, like yeah. we know it's a thing. But it happens everywhere in the world. I guess it happens everywhere, but it's yeah. kind of annoying when like, you're not just a traveler, like, yeah. yeah. So adding on from, the reservation thing, I yeah. think one thing we you should learn is avoid, if you can avoid lunchtime, avoid it at all costs. Mm. Otherwise, your one hour lunch break, you'll spend 55 minutes waiting. True. Five minutes eating. Yeah. There's so always go just before or a bit after. There's a rule in Singapore where... Lunchtime. It's lunchtime. in Asia. It's all in it's in Asia. Is it? Yeah. Remember 12, when we go to Japan, same thing. 12 p.m. on the dot. Ugh. Everyone's going for their lunch. Yeah, it could be 11.59, yeah. you'll blink 12 <laughs> people. Like, Literally. What? 
So if you're hungry, I'll go like 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Or if you're not that hungry, wait till like one, two o'clock yeah. to miss the, if you uh, can wait. the lunchtime rush hour. Yeah. Uh, which is fine, it's fine, but like if you don't like queuing or you wanna... Because yeah. the thing is, you end up taking your lunch and then you kind of feel like, oh, we should probably get out of here because there's more people waiting to sit down. Yeah. So then you feel like your lunch kind of gets cut short. Rushed. One from, from me is payment methods. Yeah, we've touched on this a few times. It's the most confusing thing. Still, I love how we're still moaning about it. I but still, yeah. more have popped up. More, we've got more now. We've got Google Pay coming. Grab Pay. Grab Pay. Payla. You use Fave Pay Fave now, Pay, right? Fave Pay, I use that now. You actually converted and you're enjoying it. Yeah, but it's only if it goes through Payla. Payla, Pay Now. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, it, Pay. Yeah, it's so confusing. Apple Pay, Grab Pay, <laughs> so many wallets you have to keep track of. Yeah. If you want to get the most out of your money, you'd have to have one of each. Yeah. Because certain outlets only use certain payment methods yes. to get discounts. Let us know in the comments which payment method is your favourite and the why. The best all-rounder. Yeah, the best all-rounder. Yeah. I'd like to know. Um, the good thing about Singapore is there's loads of ways to accumulate miles and cash back as yeah. well. Um, Air miles is something we would never have like considered in the never. UK, but I think it's just when you're in Singapore and travel is so accessible that you think, yeah, like it's worth me accumulating air miles and we're going to be traveling more often. So di like different credit cards have different perks. Yeah. The only thing for credit cards I would recommend, if you get offered an American Express, oh, yeah. say no. <laughs> I got mine, they, so I got like one, and they said, oh, do you want Visa or, Amer or, or American Express? I said, in all honesty, I don't know, what's the best one? And they said, oh, we'll put you down for American Express. <laughs> so I get it, worst decision. What was the other option? Visa. Oh, you should have got Visa. American Express is taken by probably 50% of places. Yeah. So you can't use it all the time. Yeah. So you've got this card, nice and shiny, <laughs> ready to rack up some points. You go there, oh, uh -huh. we don't take that. <sighs> yeah, it's really annoying touched on it before but I think we didn't quite comprehend there's a there's a strong working ethic and work culture here so you just have to be prepared yep. to work long hours yeah. work weekends be accessible 24 7 yeah um yeah. your life is probably gonna It'll just be feel work like work first, becomes your life personal life second yeah yeah it's just a shock to the system it is the days of nine to five Mm -mm. On the flip side, I am looking forward to that calming down a bit when we go to the UK. Yeah. And I know that it's not going to be so much of but our, like, consuming worried. our life so much. I'm worried that now I'm converted and now that's ingrained I know. in me. I'm and now well. that's what I expect. I know. I think you're going to completely have to change your outlook. Is yeah. that Justin's going to want. Now I probably won't be able to switch off. I'll be the opposite. Well, like, we're oh, gonna you're have... lazy. Oh, you're... No, you're we're going to have to untrain you. What do you mean? It's five o'clock. It's only five. <laughs> I know. We're going to have to untrain you because, yeah. guys, l work is not life. Work is not everything. You have to... It's Unless important. it's your own business. <laughs> Unless it's your own business. I just yeah. think it's so important to have a work-life balance if you can. Um, so just be prepared when you move to Singapore. Obviously, it's dependent what industry you're going into, but... Work-life okay. balance isn't so much of a thing. Unless it's your own business. Yeah. Or unless you're work earning a sickening amount, of a life-changing amount of money. Yeah. Then you can justify it. Yes. If you're not, there's more. To I it. would also really like to ask you guys who are currently working in the UK. Can you let us know if the UK is evolving into this same kind of mentality, or is there still a clear work-life um, separation? Because. Yeah. I was wondering if, you know, we've been away for five years, maybe being accessible on WhatsApp yeah, all, I think that's at all times is like the new thing globally. Maybe. We might just think it's Singapore, but if you can tell us if you're in the UK working, um, is that a thing there as well? Because things like WhatsApp, emails on your phone. Or is it just that we're constantly carrying our, our phones around with us yeah. at all times and that we are making ourselves accessible. Maybe that's it. Maybe we're dooming ourselves. Maybe. So one thing, say if you, because if you say, oh, go to Singapore, you might think Singapore is in Asia, right? Can you drink the water? Oh yeah. It's one of the cleanest places in the world. And it's one of the nicest wa tap waters. Oh yeah. Like we go back to the UK and we're like, 
<laughs> when we drink the tap water. What's that rubbish? What's that filth? Singapore yeah. tap water is so nice. You never have any concerns about, yeah, if you go to other Asian countries like Thailand or whatever, yeah. you'd be like, oh, is it yeah. safe to eat this? Is it safe Even to drink the, yeah, this? Yeah, the food Even and the, the water. Food. Um, but everything's here. I like it a lot. No worries at all. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it there. I hope you enjoyed hearing our points and do be sure to leave a comment as always. We'd love to hear from you. If you like what you saw or you want to see more of us, do be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and for Justin's reappearance and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.